mosquitoes. They're rampant around here. Welcome back to episode two of Stitchocalypse. This is second breakfast. Thanks for coming back again. Um, hmm, I don't wanna do this. I guess just dive right into it. So first of all, um, you can find me on Ravelry as Bad Girl Project. You can find me on Instagram as So Jinxed, and I'll put these somewhere on the screen for you. And uh, my blog, this goes into announcements, is stitchocalypse.com, and you can reach me there at hello at stitchocalypse.com. So going into announcements, my blog is now live. Yay! So stitchocalypse.com uh, for all things stitchy and witchy. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm really excited. So I have my first um, post up there now, uh, Buffon Gals are the Best Gals, featuring this dress right here on my gal. Um, so if you want to see more about that, go ahead and head over to stitchocalypse.com and it's the only post so far. <laughs> But that will change. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I've had a really great response so far, um, and I'm excited to keep posting. It's fun to have something to do. Um, currently, not wearing anything handmade, and I have to put that out there because I was really kind of insecure about that. Like, how can I have a handmade podcast where I'm not wearing anything handmade? And I'm kind of tired of pigeonholing myself into what I think a sewing and crafting blogger should be wearing and doing all the time. It's just too exhausting. So I'm not wearing anything handmade right now. Oh, well, this is Sarah do wop Do's. So she made this, but I didn't. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's get into it. Um, all right. So current sewing, <laughs> I have no new whips. And I have no finished projects uh, aside from our gal back there, which stitchocalypse.com you can read more about. Um, I've actually been knitting like a crazy person. And that kind of leads to a question I have for my friends here who, and who knit and who sew or who balance more than one craft. How do you balance more than one craft when you find yourself just really going for it with a project and you are just balls deep in that and you're like, yes, this is great. Uh, sorry, that was inappropriate. Um, but you're just, yeah, really into what you're doing. Do you just go with it and go, you know, sewing be damned, crochet be damned, whatever else you're working on and just ride that creative wave? I feel like people would say yes. So that's kind of what I'm doing. That was what I wanted to do. So that kind of brings me to all of my whips. Uh, for knitting. There's no sewing this time, um, but that's okay. So first of all, um, oh, I totally skipped over stash acquisition for sewing though. So hold on. Rewind. On Instagram, I posted about having, I posted about having gone to a local antique shop and just poking around. Um, and I actually found this beautiful fabric there. It's called, it's called Springtime in Paris. And it's a theme of Paris. Cafe, flower lady, artist, beautiful pink buildings on a brown background. Um, now, I don't normally go for brown, but I think I have a project that I'm working on that's going to look really great with this as a top. Um, and I feel like finding prints like this in my area in the wild is so hard. So just because it was brown doesn't mean that I was going to pass it up. Um, and fall is coming, so fall is coming. So. Anyways, I was really excited to get this. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I don't know that I have enough of enough yardage to make the most full gathered skirt that I like. Um, she over there, my bouffant, she is four yards um, less seam allowance. Um, 
right there and that I felt like was really really good and kind of perfect for my figure. This will be less full um, but probably most likely gorgeous nonetheless but this I was really really excited about because um, online they go for a lot more than I um, can afford so $12 for like three three ish three and a half maybe at the most three and a half yards of this print here so it was really exciting and then I also got this um, I don't think you would call it a dotted Swiss it's a vintage um, I almost think it's like a gauze. Um, it's cotton with little green, they almost look like bow ties. Anyways, it's really, really beautiful and I'm very excited to make a blouse out of this as soon as I take a break from my knitting. So, going into my knitting. I am working on my Poison Girls Beauty School Top. So I am participating in the cal that's going on and if you're not already you can still join um, you have until September 3rd to finish your garment and to post pictures of it um, so be sure to join uh, the poison girls Ravelry group on um, Ravelry so go to Instagram find poison girls and there's a post there or um, beehive yarns is also I'm pointing back here because of that dark blue skein is <laughs> Beehive Yarns. She's not back there. Um, Beehive Yarns is also hosting with her, co-hosting, um, uh, as well as Knitting is Metal, and I believe one other person, sorry, I can't remember. But anyways, so they're all hosting, so go to Poison Girls Instagram, and you can find all the details there. And for mine, I'm in the round now, this is really exciting. So if you saw my last episode, you know I've only ever knit a baby sweater. So this is my first adult sweater. And I'm in the round, a couple inches under the um, armpit, and I have begun decreasing. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm actually really excited about the color and just how everything's working up. Um, so as far as like speckle distribution, I feel like the back looks a bit better than um, it happens to be distributing across the front, but maybe I'm being too picky. Um, sorry, I don't, I'm using natural light today, so it's going to change. But anyways, I'm using Wool and Boons MCN uh, Merino Cashmere Nylon in the colorway sister sister and this is where she's all caked up she's kind of bluffing out a little bit this has been a pleasure to knit with it is so soft and there's just the ever so slightest halo and it just and it, it just creates such a drapey fabric i'm really really excited um now, being that this is, excuse me, being that this is my first uh, adult sweater, I was kind of nervous about keeping gauge throughout, um, and I finally got to the point where I'm just not going to worry about it anymore because um, I'm more concerned about getting the techniques down properly and really just coming out with a finished garment um, and if it's a little small I think it's gonna run a little bit bigger which is fine because I'm actually quite busty I probably said in the last video I'm busty so I was kind of concerned about it pulling and I just did not understand how to do an FBA and I wasn't gonna fight with my brain to figure it out so um, and I, it's probably when I do sit down to do it, it's probably going to be really embarrassingly simple to do. But um, nonetheless, I decided to omit an FBA, so I'm hoping that um, my looser stitches will um, reward me for that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to be doing the crop top 
well, I'm going to knit to the end of the shaping and try it on um, and kind of knit to the length that I would like and then do the ribbing. So I'm here and I'm really excited about this. So this has been going along swimmingly. Very excited. I also uh, started this in teal in a knit pick stroll fingering. Um, and I will be continuing that one. Um, Amy released a colorwork chart for Bleeding Heart that I really want to do on that one there because I think that's going to look really fun. So, uh, and I just didn't think this has already got so much going on. So the plain teal one will have that. I've begun the left shoulder and um, I decided to hold off on that one and kind of focus my efforts on this one seeing as it's going to take me a while and I want to make sure that I finish it by the third uh, and also be able to post that on my blog as well as a kind of closing for the cow. So this has been really fun and I've really been enjoying this one and I see a lot more woolen boon in my future, especially the merino cashmere nylon. It is so nice. Okay, so there's that. And then um, I kind of, I can't remember if I talked about this one in my last video, but this is the Hedgerow Fibers, um, just her basic shawl pattern. It's free on Ravelry. And I am not using Hedgerow um, <laughs> yarn. This is just a Knit Picks Hawthorne in uh, the Andromeda colorway. I just thought it was so cool and I think I gushed about it in my last video so I wanted to see it knit up and I am really really enjoying this. It's a little coarser than um, like other like more luxury yarns I've been working with but it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I kind of like the more sturdy feel to it. Um, I don't know. And the color is just so fun and pretty. Whatever. It takes all kinds of yarn to make a world. <laughs> so I've been working on this like a crazy person and will be on the stitch count recommended by the pattern because I want to make it quite oversized. And I do believe that I'm going to be gifting this one and I won't t say to who because I don't want them to know, but I just, oh, it's just so pretty. So this has been really, really, really fun. I haven't done much on it in the last couple of weeks um, as I've been working on my sweater and my dress. So, um, hmm, okay. Hi, PC. It's the cat. So another, um, <laughs> another project that I have going on, and I posted about this one on my Instagram stories, um, this is my, another Poison Girls pattern. Sorry, Amy, I pretty much will only knit your patterns. I'm obsessed. Um, <laughs> I'm probably really annoying on Instagram, always chatting with you. But um, this is my boardwalk blouse and I'm using a uh, Kobasi yarn. And it is, let's see, the gray is Seattle sky and the lavender is lavender. So I'm not very far, this is the upper back. And um, I've, you know, begun the decreasing there for the sleeve, it's not a sleeve, it's like a cap sleeve, anyways. So I've begun the decreasing here. And as you can see, this has also been put on hold um, as I race to finish for the cow. Um, I like having variety, a lot of different things to work on. So, and that wasn't really, it did not behoove me to craft like that for sewing. So now that I've picked up knitting, it's like, I can start all the projects in the world and whenever I get sick of one and move on to the next one and I'm just bouncing back and forth on everything and it's, excuse me, it's a lot of fun. Um, oh, this here is gonna be the red that I use for um, the the um, teal beauty school so I didn't think I had it next to me which is why I didn't show you before so this is the upper back 
and then the left shoulder I've been working on. So I thought that this was really nice and rich and would look lovely with this. So this is a Madeline Tosh unicorn tail I got at my local yarn shop in the color um, tart. Yes, this is in tart. So I will be using that for this. And then in my um, my vase behind me, right there, um, I have leftover yarn from other projects. And one of them is uh, from my Money Honey Turban that I knit in Beehive Yarns uh, Barbarella base which is her gold Stellina in the color Gunsmoke. So I'll be using that for the dagger portion of um, the color work chart for the bleeding heart there. So um, there's that. And then believe it or not, I have one more <laughs> in progress. Um, I've been dying to uh, knit this shawl since I discovered it. Um, it's an Andrea Mowry pattern. This is her What the Fade. Y'all, I cannot even tell you how many times I redid this. Actually, I can. Eight times. I redid this eight times. My sweater, I actually would have been further along my, with my beauty school sweater if I hadn't have begun this. So... not my human child that's a dog his name is Charlie he is whiny anyway so yep I finished the first brioche pattern um, section and I'm using Harajuku uh, skinny singles from hedgehog fibers and crybaby uh, also, um, also Hedgehog Fibers, Skinny Singles, and since I'm about, I'm about to do the first color fade, so Harajuku will fade into Crybaby. I know, it's, the light is probably too intense. Yeah. The sun's starting to come out. I'm a really slow talker. Or a lambler. And then this is teacup, which Crybaby will be fading into. Now, teacup, I've seen far more speckled versions of this. This one is um, pretty bare, but I think it'll be okay kind of helping tone down this here. And from there, it's going to fade into Madeline Tosh Unicorn Name Generator and Madeline Tosh um, Hydroponic. This could be the ugliest shawl to ever grace the earth. I have no idea. I was a little naive in uh, choosing a six color project. I'm like, oh yeah, this is beautiful. It's gonna be great. And I start sitting there trying to come up with a six color fade going, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. So I just, and I wanted like I wanted it to be crazy colors and fun, and then I wanted it to go muted and creamy neutral, and I was just it was just not working. <laughs> like I, too many ideas in one, so I'm gonna do a crazy one, and if it's hideous, then I made a hideous shawl. And if I want to make another one, I have plenty of um, like pink, mauve, and purpley. Um, colors to make something more romantic and um, so yeah <laughs> we'll see how this turns out um so far i i cannot even believe like that i've finished this i'm actually really scared to incorporate the fade because that was when i screwed up the first time like major and i started pulling it out thinking that I could pick up my stitches and my yarns, yarn overs and I lost track of where I was pulling from and it was just kind of turned into a nightmare. 
brioche surgery is no joke people so um, I'm really excited to be back at that and I'm gonna set it down for a little bit and keep working on my sweater before I screw it up again and get really upset so <laughs> this will be taking a bit of a back seat uh, for the next couple of days as I move on to my sweater um, so let's see I'm looking at my notes sorry mm -hmm. all right well, with that being said, I don't have any stash, stash acquisitions aside from that little unicorn tail um, at the moment. It's been a little bit of a tight budget right now, but that's okay because that's life. Um, what I have been doing, have, I've been um, listening to audiobooks while I knit. I do not possess the mental fortitude to sit and read and knit at the same time it's a little much and when I'm tracing out patterns or I'm making any sort of adjustments or sewing whatever I can sit and I can listen and feel like I'm multitasking so I've been doing that and I finished let's see I read The Handmaid's Tale and then I picked up the audio because I just don't like just sitting so um not doing anything like not having something to show for it at the end of a sitting session which is why knitting works really great anyways so I listened I finished um finished The Handmaid's Tale uh, via audio and then I have just finished um I'm kind of embarrassed A Court of Thorns and Roses I think it's an older book, um, and it was kind of, it was a Wollenbein recommendation, and I don't know if she listened to the audio or if she had read the book. It just came up in one of her other videos, somebody wrote in about it, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. So I listened to that, and it's definitely cheesy. And I love me some cheesy, so it was totally fine to sit and knit listening to that. Um, however, I don't know if I want to keep going with that series. I just, there's like some love triangle that's going to be starting, and that idea stresses me out so much. <laughs> like, I don't know why it's not even real. Why is it stressing me out? So, I don't think I'm going to continue on with that, but for just the first book it was it was fun to sit in it and listen to something totally cheesy and um mindless hi bc look at that cat she called bc um yeah but i i don't know what to listen to next as i continue on my knitting journey so if anybody has any suggestions, leave them in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram. <laughs> so, uh, gosh, I guess this is the episode. It's super duper short. Anyway, so let me leave you with this question. If you liked this video, please let me know if you want to see more of this by uh, subscribing, liking, commenting below, letting me know what other topics interest you in the realm of knitting and sewing. Um, ask, feel free to ask me a question and then maybe I'll feature it in the next video with an answer. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for sitting and joining me this morning and I hope you have a great day. All right.